No one knew what to make of Rex when he showed up at your school. He's a cold, mean delinquent, covered in tattoos. He has no issue laying anyone out who messes with him. And there's a running comment in school. Rex means king. And he is the king of being terrifying. Still, he's never hurt you. He's made you sit on his lap. He's flustered you. He's always got an insult or two. But tonight, he stood up to a wild animal for you after the school trip bus forgot you both. He took a blow to the head and now you're alone with him, praying for rescue while your bully slowly loses consciousness in your arms. He was saved and told you to stay away. Only to decide. You're his now. You meander home with Rex after a movie, holding his hand. <laughs> what a crappy movie. I saw that guy's death coming a mile away. I mean, who hums the Jaws theme while standing in a fucking swamp with a frankenfish? Dumbass. He smiles faintly and your heart flutters. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for taking me out to celebrate passing my maths midterms. That's on you. Constantly harping on me, though. You've been my annoying little backpack that keeps smooching my damn ear when you think I'm not looking. Yeah, yeah. Look. Here. He hands you a small box. Open it. You peer inside and a beautiful butterfly bracelet shimmers under the streetlight. Yeah, it's a butterfly bracelet. Nothing fancy. Stones or opals. Why does there have to be a reason for me to get you something? Fuck's sake, we've only been together for six months, three days and five hours. <laughs> Whatever. Looks nice on you, all right? You appreciate me, yeah? Hmm. I gotta admit, I thought you and I would be well fucked by now. In terms of this relationship. Oh, hell no. Not not because of you. I figured I'd fuck it up by day three, but... You've been... You. Whatever. I guess it's lucky that we hooked up. You almost died to a bear. Then you nearly passed out when I kissed you. You've almost died 17 times. Yeah, it's, it's good that I'm here. Let's leave it at that. Well, here we are. Still in the same apartment after all this time. Don't worry, I remember your knocking system. Two knocks for I'm okay. Three for call the cops. I remember. Now give me a kiss before we head in. He smiles and leans down to meet you. Lips inches from yours when... <clears throat> oh, uh, hey, Mum. He subtly moves in front of you as the belligerently drunken woman shouts at him. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I know. Worthless piece of garbage. Me looking like my dad haunts you at night. Your greatest mistake. Should have left me in a ditch. Shit. Yeah. Look, can I please just go to my room and sleep? I don't care about dinner. I, I got it with him earlier. The woman glares at you with more hatred than you thought was humanly possible. Mum, you're mad at me, not them, so quit it. Poppy, go inside, okay? I've got this. You try and reach the doorknob to your apartment, but his mum snags your wrist and gives you a harsh push. Hey! Rex catches you with one arm and grabs his mother's wrist with the other. Rex's eyes turn from terrified to terrifying, molten with rage. Mom, no, sorry, Miranda, you just put hands on my partner. You're on the third story. You're on your seventh vodka of the night. If you were to fucking fall down those stairs and you nearly push them down, I seriously doubt anyone would be fucking surprised. No one would miss you. I can tell you that much. 
You desperately tug on his arm and he fights it for a moment. I don't care if I'm scaring the heartless old bitch. She could have killed you. After a moment, Rex lets go of his mother. You heard them. I'm staying the night at their place. You bother us? You call the cops? You do anything to piss me off further? I'll let the whole goddamn city know about your little side hustle. Got it? I'm fine. Yeah, look. Just can I hold you, please? Thanks. We go back to your room and curl up on the bed with him. That's good. His breath is quick, almost laboured as he holds you. You you feel so small. I'm going to break you. I'm going to break you. God knows I don't want to. I'm going to break you. 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 I'm already close to losing you just by being my shitty fucking self. She's going to push me past being someone anyone could fucking love. He trembles under you, face twisted in bitter anger. I hate her. Really, no spite, no mocking, just... I'm allowed to feel how I want. Look, why are you doing this? You're not afraid of me. For some weird reason. And I don't have anything I could use to blackmail you into staying with me, so what the fuck are you playing at? Huh? The wall behind your bed, what about it? Jesus, is that... That must have been my bedroom on the other side and the... And the crack. Oh, yeah, the... The night Dad's football team lost, so he threw me as hard as he could and screamed touchdown while I twitched on the ground. No idea you were here. You heard it then. All those years we lived by each other. Hey. Uh, hey, c- come here. Oh, damn it, don't make me. Fine. With a grunt, he takes your wrists and pins you beneath him. His expression is still cold and haughty, but his eyes betray him. What did you mean by, I feel like I failed you? What? Wait. You mean you wanted to run in to protect me like I did for you? You idiot. You think you could have taken a retired boxer just to protect me? You'd have cut your palm open if you tried to even slap him. Then I'd have to kiss said palm like this. He kisses your palm before drawing it up and resting it against his cheek. He'd go for a right hook on me while you were distracted and hit my cheek right here. You'd have to hold an ice pack on my cheek like this. And you do that thing where you rub your thumb over my eyebrow to feel the scar. You look into his eyes and he looks into yours. An odd mix of sultry and scared. That unconditional love thing you're doing. Please, keep doing it. I want to be good for you. Even if it's just a little bit. And even if it's just for you. He kisses you, keeping you pinned beneath him. Even with the earlier events. You're just glad he's here. <laughs>